Welcome to Login with NFTs from Vault ID. I'm Tamino and I will show you today from start to finish how to set up our product, the IDP kit locally on your machine and how to configure it so your users can log in on an Next.js web application with their NFT and only if they are a, a holder of a certain NFT collection, you will specify in the IDP kit configuration section. So you can now leverage the same technology used by sign in with Google, sign in with Facebook, and now enable it as sign in with NFTs. So I'm excited. I hope you too. And let's start building. Welcome to the IDP kit setup section where we now will use the IDP kit on our local machine. So before we get started, make sure you have the JDK 16 build environment and Gradle installed. So without further ado, let's get into it. So there are two different ways how you could build the project. It's one is Gradle and the other one is Docker. You can use whatever you want. I will go with Gradle build. So let's first clone a project. Let's go on onto a terminal and download it. Change directories. Perfect. So what's next? We need to set up a vault.yaml file. This will be used by the IDP kit to contact a node via Alchemy and then use the API key, which we also then get from Alchemy to talk to the blockchain and verify that the user who is trying to sign is actually an owner of the NFT collection we will later be specifying in the IDP kit um, configuration section. So let's create the file. and open the application in our editor. Perfect. So for the configuration file, we can just use this default one right here and copy that into our project. So there are only two sections we worry about. The first one is the provider section and the other one, the API keys. So providers, depending on where your NFT collection is hosted, you need to update the correct chain. So in my example, it will be the Mumbai chain. And then we also need the API key. So that will be the HTTPS endpoint of the node. And that will be the API key so we can authenticate our request against that node. And the node endpoint we will get from Alchemy. So let's go into our account and create an app. Let's call it IDP kit. Then we use Polygon and the Mumbai network and create. Now, if we view our keys, we get the endpoint, which we can put in here. And we will get the API key, which we can put in here. So when that is all done, we can go back to our section and actually build a project and install all dependencies. So we will do that. Go back in here, open our terminal and run the Gradle install. Great, so the build is finished and now we can just try to run our... Yeah, first I always create an alias. So I don't always have to go into the build folder. Um, let's do that. And then we can just run IDP kit dash H. Welcome to the client registration section where we will be registering our client with the IDP kit. When we do that, we will get back a client ID and client secret. Both those credentials will then be used by our client to make requests to the IDP kit. 
The IDP Kit will then ask the user to sign a message, share their address, and then the IDP Kit will use that information to validate that the user is actually an owner of that address. And if the address is also associated with an NFT of our specified collection. If that's all true, then we will get a success response and the IDP Kit will provide the client with a secret, which then the client can use to request information about the identified user. All that builds up on the standards based on OpenID Connect. So if you want to go more deeply into that and understand how the concepts are built up and how the secrets are shared in between, you can go to a section and read up on it in our written tutorial. You can also watch a great illustrative video by OctaDev and also use the identity provision via NFT section in our docs to understand how things are translated from OpenID Connect to will also be working with the NFTs. With that said, let's go back to our terminal and the IDP kit and register our first client. Make sure you have an alias set so the IDP kit, otherwise this won't work. Then go back to the setup section and create the alias and come back here so everything works fine. Let's go to our terminal and register our client. We will, using the client's register command, provide a name and a redirect URI. This will make sure that only client with the localhost 3000 can make requests successfully to our IDP kit, that's another security layer, so not everybody can just call our, um, our backend and register users. You can also provide a flag, allow all redirect URIs. In that case, there will be no limit and everybody can just call it if they have the credentials to do so. But we will be using just this one where we specific, specify one redirect URL, in our case, the local for 3000 because our front end will be hosted there. And later we will be changing it if it's public. So let's run that command. And now we get back all the information we need, the client ID and the client secret are the most important ones we will be then using in a later section. Welcome to the NFT collection configuration section. In this section, we will be defining the chain as well as the smart contract address of our NFT collection against which our users who try to log in will be um, checked. So if a user is holding an asset of that collection, then the login will be successful. Otherwise, we will get an error on the front end. The configuration will be done in the IDP kit config JSON. So if we go and take this information and go into our project. And now in our config and the IDP kit config.json, we will find down here the default NFT token claim. So in our case, where I was using the Mumbai network, so I need to replace the polygon value with Mumbai. So the correct chain. And then I will be putting in my contract address. So if that's done, we need to rebuild the project. So I will just run that command. And after that, we can start the API and start with our front end. So that is done. And now we can just run the IDP kit. Perfect. Welcome to the Next.js section where we now will set up our front-end application and make sure we can log in using the IDP kit as our logging service. So we have prepared a Next.js example project so you can get started right away. 
And we also extended the next off JS library with our own provider. So the NFT provider, which you can use and you simply need to update some variables and you're ready to go. You need to make sure you have a MetaMask and a comp or another compatible wallet. Um, so we can then connect to the front end application and share our address. So the IDP kit can validate that we are an owner of an NFT of this NFT collection we specified before in, in the IDP kit. So without further ado, let's get started. Make sure you have Node.js and Yarn. And then we, yeah, let's clone the project, go in our terminal, then change directories, install all dependencies. Great, then we can just open that in our favorite editor, bring that up, awesome, that looks good. All right, what do we need to do next? So the client ID in the client secret, which we got during the client registrations, we now need to put into the environment variables file. So in here we have this env example, which we can just rename. Otherwise this won't work later on. So let's just remove the example. And now we need to get those two secrets. So let's go back in here and move to our IDP kit where we can then just check IDP kit, P kit, then config, OIDC, clients list. Great, so here we have the list, just copy that client ID and put it in here. And the same with the client secret. So there's one thing we need to change though, because we have here specified the localhost 3000, which is somehow correct, but it's not the exact redirect URI, which will be used by the next off JS library. So we need to update that. And to do so, we can just run IDP kit, um, OI config, OIDC, and then let me check. So we can just use the register comma. So clients, if I could type clients register, register, and then the name, which is my front end, and then the redirect URI now will be, so let's check, copy that value. So it will be the localhost 3000 slash API slash off callback and then world ID and NFT because that's the provider we are using. And then because we don't want to create a new one, we just need to update the old one. And to do so, we can just provide um, the U and the client ID and this will update our provider. Perfect. So now that's set up, we can then also just run IDP kit run the, this whole thing because we need it later on. Okay, that's set up. Our front end also has all the things. Let's check again if we forgot anything. Okay, awesome. Now let's go into our handler for a second. So API off and this next off. So it's a fetch all route and it handles the request. We just need to make sure. So that's getting parsed from the ENV file. But here, this identity provider URL, now it's set to localhost 8080, which is fine because our IDP kit is running here. So that's perfect. But if you later deploy it publicly um, and it's in production mode, you need to update this, otherwise it won't work. Yeah, so with that, we can just go in here and run yarn dev. And then let's see. So then we can go localhost 3000. Nice, up and running. So let's see, sign in, sign in with the NFT, 
connect wallet metamask and here we need to provide our password put that in here awesome and then log in connect and now sign the message Awesome, now we are logged in. So at the end, we signed a message that was sent to the IDP kit, the IDP kit checked, okay, is, is we are, are we really the owner of the address? And then it checked all the assets we have and said, okay, we have an asset um, with the, of the collection we specified before. So now we, we could sign in. Yeah, so that's it. You now have a front end and the IDP kit and everything running and you can, your users can now log in with NFTs. We've now reached the end of the tutorial, login with NFTs. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give a thumbs up and don't forget to show off your work in our community channels in Discord or GitHub discussions. So see you in the next one. Have a great day.